Hey Cedar Rock, this is Pastor Daniel, and uh, welcome to our first digital Wednesday night Bible study. This is a little strange for you, I'm sure. It's a little strange for me as well, as we're typically used to gathering in a room, praying together in person, studying God's Word in person, and uh, talking about it. Uh, but today, of course, with everything that's been going on and, and our change of plans, we're going to do things a little differently, and I... Uh, you know, hope, hope you'll be patient with us as we figure this out today. Uh, I'm going to begin with a word from Psalm 46, and uh, then we'll pray, and then we'll get started. Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let's pray. God, thank you that we can be still in an anxious time. That we can know that you are God. We know that you can be exalted among the nations. You are exalted in the earth. And we pray that tonight as we study your word um, and, and talk about the kind of hope we have in Jesus, that you would be with us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Well, typically on a Wednesday night Bible study, we would begin with prayer, and we would share our prayer requests, and then we pray, and then we do a Bible study. For a variety of reasons, I'm going to change it up tonight. We're going to start with our, uh, with our study, do that, and then we'll move to a time of prayer and announcements. And again, as we do this, uh, when we get to that time of prayer and announcements, I hope that you will actually take time to pray when we lift up some names um, to pray for. And... and if you have someone you need to lift up in prayer, uh, please let me know, and, and next Wednesday we can include that in our list. Tonight, you know, typically on Wednesdays we would go through and discuss the passage that we studied on Sunday. Tonight uh, is different, and this week is different. This season of life is different. I was talking to one of you, and you said that you know, in your many years of life you've never seen anything quite like this, and. Um, so I just wanted to, to, to th help us think tonight about um, coronavirus, specifically in how we respond to it. Uh, and I wrote an article about this uh, this week at intersectproject.org. I'm just going to kind of overview what we talked about there. Um, and, and the truth is, and if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes, but our lives have changed. In just a matter of days, everything about our lives has changed because of coronavirus. And we are all taking steps uh, to protect ourselves, to protect our loved ones from this very deadly virus. And, and I hopefully you are taking those steps to be careful with your health and be careful with the health of those you love. But at the same time, in addition to taking care of our physical health, we want to be sure to take care of our spiritual health. And, of course, this will be challenging in the coming days and weeks as the things that we uh, are used to about church will be different. And um, so just on a very practical level, I hope that on Sunday morning when we publish our message uh, for this Sunday that you will gather with your family, your loved ones, whoever, and, and listen to it together and study God's Word and pray in your home as we do that. But I want to give us some, some wisdom here, perhaps, on some other ways that we can think about this coronavirus, uh, some other ways that we can respond well. And, and I want to frame it in this way, watching our words, watching our witness, watching our soul. First thing we need to do, I think, is, is watch our words. Um, maybe you or someone you know has said something like this. We just got to have faith, and then we'll be okay. You, you uh, said that or thought that in the past few weeks. I know I probably have at some point. Uh, to, to think or believe the idea that if I just have faith, then I will be okay. And, and in a sense, that's right. I mean, we have the hope and the promise that no matter what happens to us on earth, that we have a coming hope, a coming um, future in God's presence when we turn from our sins and trust in Jesus. So we do have that hope and faith in that sense. 
is a promise for us. But I think sometimes we take that promise of an eternal healing and drag it over into the present. Um, and, and I think that sometimes we assume that having faith serves as some sort of uh, vaccination, inoculation against mass diseases. But the idea that because I have faith, I am less likely to get sick is less rooted in the biblical gospel, far more rooted in something called the prosperity gospel. If you've ever heard of the prosperity gospel, the prosperity gospel is the idea that God wants his children to be physically healthy, materially wealthy, and personally happy. The idea that God wants his church, his people, to be physically healthy, materially wealthy, and personally happy. The only problem with this whole idea is that just about everybody in the Bible proves this to be false. Uh, Paul went through all kinds of sufferings, shipwrecked, uh, beaten, everything else. Most of the disciples ended up martyred for their faith. Jesus himself was crucified on a Roman cross. The Bible does not promise us that we will be physically healthy, materially wealthy, personally happy in this earth, in this life. In fact, it sometimes promises the opposite. Scripture promises us that we may suffer. And so our great hope as believers is not that Jesus would save us from the suffering, but that Jesus would be with us in the midst of the suffering. And this really is a really precious, a really beautiful promise. Faith is a wonderful gift of God with eternal rewards. But faith is not a spiritual vaccination from earthly suffering. You and I may suffer in this earth, um, but we have a hope that's coming one day down the road. So if you ever think that, if I just have faith, I'll be okay, just remember that wasn't always the case in Scripture, and it's not the case today. Don't disregard caution. Don't make rash decisions. Uh, do be bold and courageous in your faith, but, but don't think that faith will save us from earthly suffering. Our faith saves us from eternal suffering. So we need to watch our words about that. We also need to watch our words, not just what we say about faith, but what we say about God. Here's what I mean. Uh, sometimes when natural disasters or calamities, or in this case, pandemics. When they come around, we are very quick sometimes to attribute a motive to God. I mean, have you ever thought or have you ever said, you know, there's this wildfire or there's this hurricane or there's this disease. Surely that is God's judgment on insert certain group of people or insert certain group of sin. In other words, we assume, we think we know why God allowed something to happen. We think it's God's judgment for X, Y, and Z. And the truth is, it could be God's judgment, but we don't know. We really don't know. Calamities like this could be the result of God's judgment, but they may not be. In fact, um, I think if we, if we presume this too quickly, we are... Uh, kind of like Job's friends. If you remember the book of Job, think about all that Job had to go through. He lost his family. He lost his health. He lost his livelihood in just a matter of days. And, and he was so distraught over this. And Job's friends came to him and they assumed that he must have done something wrong. God must have been mad at him. When we make those kinds of assumptions about why God allowed coronavirus, and we assume God is judging, then we are kind of like Job's friends. Okay? We do know that God is sovereign over all things. We do know that he's in control of all things. We don't know why he allowed something like coronavirus. Um, and I think sometimes it's wiser to shut our mouths <laughs> than to speak a falsehood about God. So, so in all of this, let's watch our words and what we say about our faith, what we say about God. Secondly, watch our words. Let's also watch our witness. Um, 
what you say and do in the coming weeks will reveal a great deal about your faith. What I say, what I do in the coming weeks will reveal a great deal about my faith. People, and especially the lost, are watching our words. They're watching our lives. They're watching our social media feeds. And the question we need to ask ourselves is when they look at me, when they look at you, do they see someone who's grounded in a humble faith? Or do they see someone who's tossed about back and forth with anxiety and fear? When they look at you, when they look at me, do they see someone who mocks and scoffs at, at, at the, the wisdom and the, and the guidance people are giving us? Or do they see someone who is speaking and motivated by compassion? Listen, we have an opportunity to live hope-filled lives in a hopeless world. We Say that again. We have an opportunity to live hope-filled lives in a hopeless world. Let's make a choice today to live in such a way that points people to our Savior. Katie and I were talking about this a little bit today on the way home from uh, one of my appointments. Um, and uh, we went by to see someone, a, a friend of our family who is not a believer. And this person is very generous to us. And uh, just an incredibly kind person. And, and just as we're thinking about this, we're praying that through something like this, that God would work in their lives and draw them to himself. God would use us in this season of suffering to, to be salt and light, to they would see this hope-filled life in a hopeless world and they'd be drawn to Jesus. Maybe you have someone like that too. Watch your witness. What you say, what you do in the coming days and weeks will matter. So watch your words, watch your witness. Third, and encourage us all to watch our souls. Watch our souls. Um, seasons of unexpected change, unexpected worry, have a way of revealing parts of ourselves that we did not know existed. And just a smaller example of that, um, you know, when we uh, had our first child, he was born, he was a baby, uh, all those sleepless nights, all those days of stress and difference and change, there are parts of my soul that came out that were kind of ugly, and it gave me a chance to deal with those things, right? Perhaps this is one of those occasions for all of us where the, 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 the crucible of suffering is exposing parts of our lives, parts of our souls, parts of our character that we need to deal with. Uh, Brian Welch uh, writes about it this way at the Gospel Coalition. He says, God uses suffering to expose the sin that clings so closely to our hearts. When we suddenly bear an affliction, our pride, impatience, and unbelief will often surface. Pain has a way of cracking open the heart, laying it bare. And I love that quote. Pain has a way of cracking open the heart and laying it bare. Ask yourself, what will this season reveal about you? And maybe you don't know the answer to that now, but maybe through this time you'll begin to see that. Listen, if you have an intense scorn or derision of health officials' recommendations, for example, maybe this season God is revealing to you your pride, and you need to deal with that. If you're in a constant state of panic, a constant state of anxiety, maybe God is revealing to you an ungodly fear, and you need to deal with it. If you are hoarding mounds of toilet paper and soap and you have 14 gallons of milk that you'll never get to, okay? Perhaps God is revealing to you some materialism and you need to deal with that. And so whatever God cracks open in your heart, take time to deal with it. Take time to acknowledge it as sin, to repent of it, to move towards 
holiness in this particular area of your life. And if you have questions of what that looks like, give me a phone call, give me a, a text message, and we can talk through that, what, what that would look like. Um, because the coronavirus pandemic is, is a really terrible thing. But perhaps God can use it. It's a tremendous gift in your soul to make you more into the image of his son. So, you know, in the coming days and weeks, be careful with your health. Um, be careful with the health of your loved ones. This is a, from everything I've read, this is a deadly, deadly virus. And we want you to be careful at the same time. Be careful with your words. Be careful with your witness. And be careful with your soul. Let's pray. God, um, I pray this would be the case for every single one of us, that we would be careful with our words, careful with our witness, careful with our soul. God, use this time of suffering, of inconvenience, to draw us closer to you and make us into the image of your Son. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, let me just list a couple of prayer needs for you Cedar Rock regulars. Uh, I don't have, we don't have the, the full list tonight. But uh, we do want to pray for this particular epidemic, pandemic. Um, it has already affected tons and tons of people, both those affected by the illness, uh, those affected by loss of life of a loved one, and, and I mean, I'm thinking about those affected by uh, how it's affected their livelihoods. Uh, we have people in our church and our community who have livelihoods that are very personally affected by all of this. So let's let's pray for them. And if you have a local business that you, you know, care for and, and value, consider uh, some ways that you can help them too, or uh, you know, still be patrons despite everything everything that's going on. Uh, but let's pray for those people. Affected. Let's also uh, pray for those who are affected by, again, work. Their work is affected by all of this and they're losing hours. Pray for them. Pray for um, our leaders, our uh, national and state leaders, President Trump, the team that's in charge of the response, the governor and the team that he has. Just pray that God will give them wisdom. It's a really, really challenging time. I don't think anyone... Uh, who's serving our country in elected leadership. Uh, nobody had this in mind when they ran for office, and so we want to pray that God would give them wisdom and strength in these days. Um, also, uh, a couple of, uh, one, one more prayer request. I want to pray for Pam Narrams, Bobby Woods' niece with her severe health complications. Pray that God would give her strength. Um, and let's also pray uh, for, for Willis Gupton as he continues to improve, and we want to pray that would continue to be the case. Um, as well. And some praises. Uh, just a brief praise report on me. I went to the doctor today. Stitches removed. Things are going well. Praise God for that. And uh, just thank you for your kindness and encouragement to me. Also another praise I shared with the church on Sunday. But Joe uh, and I went out this week to a gentleman in our community. He's got some very severe health issues. Uh, but he has recently trusted Christ. And Joe and I were able to come to him and, and administer baptism to him. Um, I think in an ideal world, he would come to the church and be baptized. It's, it's not an ideal world, and he's not able to do that. So we were so tremendously blessed by that this week. So let's pray for those people uh, and others that you have, prayer needs you have. Uh, finally, some announcements. Uh, this Sunday, uh, we will have uh, a, a miniature video worship service ready for you Sunday morning. I hope you will take the time to uh, to worship with us. Uh, Cody Beasley, our intern, is going to lead us in just a brief little bit of music. I'm going to preach a message uh, as we continue the series of the final days of Jesus. Hope you'll join us virtually for that. We are also finalizing something that I am just so tremendously excited about called the Cedar Rock Care Plan. And this is a way that we can stay connected and stay uh, together during this difficult season. I don't want to say anything else because I'm going to reveal, share more about that soon. So hold on to that. Um, and uh, also moving forward, uh, Cody Beasley, our intern, is um, for the next couple of Wednesdays going to be teaching us through the book of First Thessalonians. He'll 
uh, come and share that with you. Maybe I'll lead some time in prayer as well. But Cody's going to be teaching us First Thessalonians. I think he's going to start with verses 1 through 5 next week. So Cody, we haven't had a chance to see this that much, most of you, but Cody is a, is a very gifted uh, Bible um, interpreter. And he's uh, really gifted studying and understanding the Bible. And we're going to get to learn from him on Wednesdays, First Thessalonians. So we look forward to that. Cedar Rock, uh, I hope you know how much I love you. And um, um, These are trying times. These are difficult times. But uh, I know and I believe that God can use these times to draw us closer together to make us stronger and see how much we really value the church. And um, uh, my prayers to each of you, if you need anything, please give me a phone call, text message. Look forward to talking to you. Let's pray. We'll conclude. God, thank you for your goodness and your grace. You are a great, loving, wonderful God. I thank you for the church here at Cedar Rock. God, my brothers and my sisters, um, who I love so dearly, and that you love so dearly. And God, I pray that you would be with them, help them to, to feel loved and appreciated and known and seen in this very trying time. Protect their health. Protect their words, their witness, and protect their souls. We pray all this in Jesus' name.